What's going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? And that's right, you read correctly. If you've been living under a rock, uh, Games Workshop are being sued for $62.5 million. Um, and how successful this is going to be, I don't know, but um, it's basically a Florida man filing a, law filing a lawsuit against Games Workshop for the for um, for some various reasons actually. And if you go onto Bell of Lost Souls, you will see the case basics of what why he's suing them. Um, but let's just have a look at some of the uh, the interesting facts. Um, well, let let me appear first. Uh, it seems rude not to be addressing you. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, Games Workshop. Uh, the reason I just wanted to have the um, the whole thing behind me on the screen for a bit longer. Um, <laughs> so the case basics. Then now, I'm not going through the Bell of Lost Souls um, that you can just look at here as well. And I've got some other stuff as well from uh, other sources on the internet. So the basics of it is, uh, so um, a Florida man is filing a lawsuit with the uh, United States District Court, Southern District of Florida, and he did this on May the 31st of 2017, so that's this year, but that's pre-8th uh, edition, so while we we're all getting hyped up about that, this was going on. Uh, it's called David Moore, a Florida man, is suing Games Workshop, alleging fraud, price fixing, torturous interference, violations of the Sherman Antitrust Act, and racketeer influenced and corporate orgs, arced RICO and unfair trade practices under 18 and 15 USC. Moore aims to reclaim $62.5 million in damages broken up as follows according to the official complaint document. And then it goes into um, a little bit of a breakdown um, regarding the the actual case itself uh, now before we go into that i i have to say i don't know anything about law at least i don't know anything about um american laws and things like that although i've heard of rico and things like that and uh, i imagine that's because games Workshop is such a large company but here let's go through the breakdown of what he's claiming here Sorry, I've got to keep my paper out of the way because uh, it's on yellow paper, which is not good for green screen. So, plaintiff seeks damages. So this is just excerpts of the case. Uh, so, uh, one point is to award plaintiff his costs of litigation upon his detailed account of hours and work on these matters uh, kept concurrent with the work itself and damages of two and a half million for unwillful, unwillful intentional and illegal acts to damage plaintiff's business and investments and declaratory relief in the form of an order from this court nullifying any and all claims from GW of copyrights, trademarks or intellectual property that GW has tried to assert, file or enforce enforce in America to convey the same to a plaintiff to create a federally approved non-profit non non-profit public trust to dutifully administer GW's betrayed public obligations or exchange items under its policy to be administered by stores slash trust and an amount of $50 million to be paid by GW to stores to operate stores trust to administer and oversee the fair and continued support or exchange of the public's betrayed investments cited herein to then convert the public domain in 10 years and Punitive damages of a further $10 million paid by GW to plaintiff for willful, intentional and illegal acts of RICO, price fixing, stock manipulation, fraud, torturous interference with business, copyright theft and public fraud, misuse of copyright laws et al. And for any other and further relief that the court feels just and proper. Now, a lot of that just goes right over my head, you know, especially especially this head, but it does. Um, but that's the breakdown. Uh, two and a half for will for intentional illegal acts. Uh, 50, uh, sorry, two and a half million for that. 50 million um, to oversee the fair and continued support, blah, 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 for the betrayed investments. And a further 10 million uh for will for intentional and illegal acts of rico price fixing stock manipulation blah 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 so plaintiff's allegations so i'll just pop that down there a bit easier the complaint 
is a six page document altogether and outlines five courses of action, fraud, restraints of trade, willful pump and dump scheme, conspiracy and breach of contract. The nature of the action stems from Moore's allegation that GW maintains a monopoly on a sci-fi fantasy wargaming. Oh, I'll just get a bit comfier here. GW feigns an a, a accidental monopoly on sci-fi fantasy wargaming. In fact, they intentionally retasked into a criminal scheme fronting as a game manufacturer to carry out a racketeering enterprise of organized crime. Lies, fraud, misrepresentation, price fixing, credit card billing fraud, intimidation, unfair trade practices, bait and switch tactics and theft of intellectual property, merchandise and monies against their own distributors and retailers. This architecture of falsehoods and Ponzi is used to manipulate stock prices that actually have no value outside of their construct of deception. They employ a cult of thralls to foment calumny and economic harm against anyone injured by their unethical violations of law. For near 20 years, stores have been a prime victim of a foreign corporation, GW's illegal lies, fraud, intimidation, price fixing, theft and racketeering crimes, as more fully detailed here and after. And I'm sorry, this, this kind of legal speech is a little bit uh, hard to listen to, but, but that is what it says there. Plaintiff supports the allegation with 40 examples uh, that outline his case against GW, including a conspiracy to defraud businesses. Your stores, business, revenue and customer relations were continually and severely damaged by GW's revealed scheme of fraud due to lost customer patronage, traffic and purchases due to GW's miasma of lies and more fully set forth in plaintiff's affidavit the hereafter, which he asserted him uh, itself was being carried out by those without ethics and morals. Okay, there's more. Uh, another, another section. Uh, no one working uh, such a... Uh, no one working such a vicious daily scam could claim they were unaware it was wrong. Conniving, spying, deceiving, lying about everything every day to people buying items with hard-earned money made by real work is hardly innocuous. GW is reputed to hire morally obtuse persons as account reps. We, with ethics of any kind, are outcast. GW members cooperated together knowingly with a daily con job against the entire public, requiring tremendous subjugation of basic ethics and morals. You could, and then there's a bit underneath of that on the Bellalos where um, the site that says you can read a full text of the court complaint here. Really, I I wouldn't recommend it though. It, um, six page affidavit, um, it's a little bit, uh, so I wouldn't bother with that. I mean, this is bad enough. There's more. Uh, <clears throat> Your plaintiff, the Reverend David Moore, hereby swears and affirms the following a detailed true statements of fact for the record by his own personal witness, knowledge, information and belief and under penalty of perjury in support therein uh, pro SE action. Point number one, GW announced in 2016 that they were not a game company, but a model company that only exposed them to the truth of their business model of infringement. So clever lawyers advised them to lie further and say they were a game company. Of course, they only ever were a miniature foundry of semi-amateur model makers under the US uh, copyright code, making a few models ripping off other copyrights to use in private games as non-profit personal use is allowed if they don't sell it. But that's not what they do. GW is a games is a game manufacturer, not a distributor or retailer of others' legally copyrighted work. Stores and others, uh, not GW, are the only correct sellers to any end user by all means. And then the third point, sorry, that was the second point. The third point is, in America, we have a free enterprise and free market system of law different than the socialist base of Europe, our Sherman Antitrust Act and the UCC ensure that companies like GW don't unfairly play steal all roles. GW violates these laws against your stores by continually seeking, uh, stealing sales and pre-ordered uh, products from 1,500 American retailers. Led along with the affidavit was Exhibit A, a letter from Games Workshop in which they cite a violation of, C of GW advertising policy, which seems to be one of the core tenets of Moore's case against GW. 
so as it says you can read the affidavit and exhibit, and exhibit a here but you know it's it's a bit meh. i mean you get the basic idea of this um okay this is interesting uh, bell of los Angeles has talked to a legal consultant who has the following thoughts on the case clearly somebody is very angry well yes I would say yes, definitely. Uh, the plaintiff is representing himself, pro SE. He possesses an LLM, which is similar to a doctorate in law. It's roughly equivalent to what you would have if you were going to teach law school or specialise in a practice area, like torts or environmental law, oil and gas, etc. The plaintiff may have been a lawyer at one point, but it is unclear. Uh, the court has sent him notifications for not following proper legal filing procedures. This is a federal case filed in Florida where the plaintiff lives, but the named parties are from other states such as South Carolina. The plaintiffs have claimed uh, just about everything you can claim and name essentially all of GW's executives. It will be difficult to get jurisdiction on them personally. At a high level, it's what is called a bathtub case. That bathtub case. The kitchen sink wasn't big enough, so the plaintiff threw the bathtub at them. It reads essentially a laundry list of complaints about how GW has done business over the last 20 years, distilled into a lawsuit. Some of this could have teeth, as any company running its own retail stores and adjusting stock levels in the way asserted is a grey area. On the other hand, self-represented pro-SE cases are almost invariably go nowhere. And on the other hand, Games Workshop hasn't responded yet, which likely means a voluntary extension. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, dear me. Uh, right. And that's that. And the other notes I found. Uh, it says that Games Workshop is no stranger to using uh, litigation to get its way. It doesn't always work, as in the now infamous Chat House Studios case, but often just the threat of GW dropping a ton of lawyers on some poor fan film or copycat mini producer is enough to get things to go its way. Now, however, a US game store owner is taking the fight to GW in his own way, suing the miniatures giant for a massive 62.6 <coughs> oh, million, it says here. But this is, um, you know, either way, it's, it's just over 62 million. And uh, let's be honest, that's a lot of dough. Um... So yeah, the, I mean, so the case, I mean, it basically revolves around six points that basically claim GW is taking undue control over the retail process, ripping off local stores in the process. Uh, good measure, David Moore, uh, he's dug up a couple of old uh, points that have been dogging GW for decades, namely that they stole the whole Space Marines thing in the first place from Robert E. Heinlein. And it's Warhammer Fantasy is uh, setting more or less from Tolkien. But you've got to be careful, actually. It's got to be absolutely definitive, hasn't it, I would say. Anyway, in America, we have a free enterprise and free market system of law different uh, than the socialist base of Europe. The, that's the Sherman Antitrust Act in US, UCC. In short, companies like GW don't unfairly play steel or rolls. GW violates these laws. Against your stores, blah, 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 blah. that's just boring stuff. Games Workshop kind of does that. Moore appears to have a point. He claims that it is, he has it on good authority, whatever good authority is, who knows, I don't know. But he has it on good authority that GW's plastic figures cost merely three cents per figure to make, yet end up with a 50,000% markup. These are toys, very much luxury toys, but it is an alarming markup nonetheless. Yes, even if that is a generalization of, you know, per figure, because each figure varies differently, doesn't it? But um, yeah, I mean, it's obvious that um, I would say that plastic figures, the markup is gonna be, uh, you know, incredibly high. Um, it says here, interestingly, a good portion of the sum that Moore is hoping to win will go into a basically a trust to support local gaming stores that have been screwed over by GW for years. Uh, but like it says though, GW has some pretty serious lawyers of its own, so it is going to be interesting to see how this plays out when it finds itself in front of the US Federal Court of Southern Florida, where Moore has filed the complaint. That is a good good point. I'm gonna pop my bits of paper to one side now because i'm done with that but yeah now 
what do I think about it personally? Because I was asked this in person. I don't think it's, I think it's gonna get drawn out quite a long time. Will it, will it end up with a payoff? I don't know if, if it does, it'll be considerably smaller than 62 million, I can assure you. Um, personally though, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. That's just my own personal belief because I think GW are, are more savvy than that. I think, I think they've done business enough over the years and have been involved in the legal side of things to be way too clever to get caught out by by anything that uh, anyone like Mr. David Moore can bring forth uh, to the uh, Court of Southern uh, Court of uh, Florida. So I, d I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but that's just my own belief. But what do you think? I would like to hear your thoughts. What do you think is going to happen with this case? It's very interesting. Um, whatever happens is very interesting and it will be interesting to see what happens i'm going to keep a close eye on it um not because i think there's any serious threat or anything like that. i i really don't i don't um or then again i could be wrong um you know so this could just be the first time someone's you know had the you know the guts to stand up and do this thing too often people lay down and just you know play doormat for for companies and big fat cats like gw uh, personally i love them I, you know they don't they don't bother me i love them uh, there's a great they produce great games and fantastic miniatures which i love just asking you guys what your thoughts on the matter are because like i say it's interesting but let me know in the comments down below and uh, remember all brushes lead to what and i'll see you on the next video bye for now